My name is Neo Matola. I'm a research uh, technician with the National Zoological um, Gardens Biobank um, within the um, research and scientific um, services. Um, what we basically do is um, we offer support within the um, um, research and scientific um, departments um, and also internal and ex sorry and also um, internal and external stakeholders um, in terms of providing them with access to bi wildlife biomaterial. Um, firstly, uh, we'll start with the definition of what is the biobank, um, collection of bio biological material with applicable database, which is systemized for the purpose of research or re routine reviews, um, which it includes biomaterial like the blood, tissues, DNA, hair, feathers, etc. The reason why we bank this um, wildlife uh, biomaterial is with the declining populations of wildlife in nature, research can be conducted on this bank biomaterial that can eventually lead to increasing our knowledge of how to effectively manage wildlife and prevent loss, further loss in genetic uh, di diversity. The purpose is to develop an effective and efficient methods for storing biomaterial, for conducting research in a variety of scientific mm. disciplines, to aid in the conservation of South African wildlife biodiversity and also a field. It is important to preserve this biomaterial because it's a tool okay, thank you. for research in conservation science, particularly in the fields such as veterinary medicine, reproductive technologies, molecular genetics, and comparative nutrition. Uh, and also, uh, for, um, like for um, molecular genetics, uh, you can be able to um, determine the parent, the, the 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 parenting pattern, and also the nutrition of the species. Um, the loss of biodiversity on a global scale is causing a decline in faunal and floral numbers, but also contributing to the massive decline in gene pools. Not only the loss of biodiversity biodiversity, but also the increase in animals and animal parts that are being illegally traded has had a detrimental effect on the populations worldwide. Recently in the news, all we hear is the extinction of the number of species that um, we see. Just um, by looking at the rhino, um, sorry, uh, the black rhino at the moment, um, we have about uh, 5,055 5, 5, in, in Africa. Um, at the beginning of the 20th century, there was 500,000 rhinos across Africa and Asia. This has decreased to 70,000 by 1970 and only 29,000 in the world today. For example, the black rhino, there's a 96 decline from 65,000 in 97 to just 2,300 in 1993. Both the Sumatran and the German rhinos listed as critically endangered, uh, critically endangered, with German rhinos uh, with about 30 to 35 to 45 individuals in a single population. Unlike famous explorers in the past, we cannot simply go anywhere in the world and collect whatever specimens we like and do whatever what we want with them. There are legislations now in place to control and access the intended use of these genetic resources. Repositories nowadays not only provide a critical role in curating these valuable, often irreplaceable samples, but also providing the metadata associated with the animal and the collecting event of the biomaterial. The SDG Biobank, it coordinates and it collects, processes and stores this uh, biomaterial under different optimal storage conditions suitable for research and management applications. The bank um, complies and had hires to international bank practices guidelines um, like for the ESPA and the GGBN just to ensure the high um, quality of these bioreperatories bio and also the exchange of biomaterial in accordance of 
national and international legislation. Sampling opportunities have also become something of the science, not only in the field collection. Not only is the field collection optimized, because um, the collection of um, biomaterials in the field has become very expensive, so it is important to optimize the collection of these uh, biomaterials in the, in, the, in the field. But the implementation of chain of custody collection techniques has become an almost standard operating procedure. This has developed since the NZG is, has been nominated uh, as a South African partner for the Google Barcode of Wildlife Project and is responsible for the collection, curation, <coughs> and contribution towards the DNA sequencing of priority listed specimens. Um, as we also know that um, there's a high illegal trading of, um, of, of, of some of the species. So the DNA, back, DNA Google of Wildlife Project will enable their participating um, partners to be able to tackle this, um, uh, um, the illegal trading of animals. As well as optimizing the sampling opportunity, therefore contributing to the metadata for the individual species techniques and also develop and test the, 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 the test and perfect the methods in the field. This is just an overview of the current samples that we have in the bank. We have about 840 species represented by approximately 30,000 individuals with a total of almost 80,000 samples banked. And it comprises of um, about 35,000 blood derivatives, um, also about 5,000 DNA extractions, 6,500 hair feather samples, 15,000 semen samples, 11,000 notches, uh, biopsies, and about 8,500, oh, sorry, and about 8,500 necropsy samples, which is the pathology samples. According to the IUCN red list species, out of the 840 species that we have, we have two that are extinct in the wild, 15 that are critically in endangered, 32 that are endangered, 67 that are vulnerable, and about 43 that are near threatened. Um, this is just um, some of the rare samples that we have, like the Mo gazelle and the mountain zebra. Um, of the two uh, species that are extinct in the wild, we have the, um, the Simita um, <coughs> horned oryx and also the western black rhino. Um, this is just um, some of the critically endangered, um, like the white rhino and the western lowland um, gorillas. Through the NZG Biobank, a single port of entry for organizations requiring African wildlife material for research, conservation, and biotechnology development purposes have been developed. The collection contributes to the research and development in the areas of biodiversity, conservation, biotechnology, and forensic sciences. These tissues, the biomaterial collections, are stored under optimal storage conditions across various temperatures to allow high quality research to be done from this. Um, like I've mentioned, um, we have um, the hair, the hair, feather, and skin, which are stored um, at room temperature bank. Um, the hair, which are stored, uh, storage is in the envelope. And then this is just how an overview of the, our tissue bank looks like the DMSO samples and the hair feather samples which we keep in the envelopes and also the FFPE blocks. Uh, also the blood, um, which is the blood derivatives which we store at the minus 80 degrees or we keep, um, keep the FTA paper which is just a drop on the FTA paper which we store either at four degrees or room temperature. This is how our um, DNA banks look like, uh, where we have 
ultra low freezers we store our blood samples and also the dna samples and then this is just to show the 80 well uh, boxes where we store our um, blood samples um, we also have the semen, which is cryo preserved in um, liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees. Um, this is our semen bank, cryo bank, with the tanks with various semen samples stored in them. Uh, we also have the organs, parasites, which we get via the post mortem samples. Um, and this is how the bank, formalin bank, look like. Um, this is the current situation at the moment, but um, not only that we looking at conserving the, our um, species, but also we trying to, to conserve our environment. So we gonna move from this system of storing in the bottles into the plastic system mm -hmm. so that uh, we can be able to conserve our environment as well. Um, the terms of the database, um, just as important as samples is, the data that comes associated with the sample is also important. Um, unfortunately, although the data has always been there, it was never in a one st a structured system. Um, even though a unique database was being designed for the biobank, support and time was a problem. The problems statement was to integrate all this data from different sources into a new specified database. The first step was to map the data concepts to the specified model and then clean the data and migrate it into the specified database and then customize the forms and um, the, the reports. Um, this has improved the overall workflow in the biobank um, it has allowed to decentralize, allow decentralized, more efficient in data capture or curation, and create a workbench to automate a bulk data transfer. As we don't work with one sample at a time, sometimes we work with a huge number of samples. So this creates a workbench to just transfer the data in bulk. This is just. Um, importing data from the access into the specified database. Um, an inventory of the samples in the biobank has been developed. Uh, we have the inventory available for the 20, 2014, and the workbench is fully operational. And then we have optimized um, the user forms of the data, and then um, developed specified labels um, for, to barcode the samples. This is our um, inventory for 2013-2014. It's got all the um, samples that we currently curate in the bank and all the IUC and red listed species. Um, the specifier also um, enables us to um, see the taxon of the species from the kingdom up until the subspecies. And also it gives us a, the, an opportunity to be able to know exactly where the sample is within the bank. So um, through the specify, you can be able to track the sample. It, it, it enables you to track the sample exactly where it is within the bank. Um, to request um, the sample, First, we have to submit a request to the NZG Biobank through the NZG, sorry, through the Biobank Curator, which is Ms. Um, Kim. And the project proposal template will be um, sent to the research coordinator, which you will, um, uh, the, sorry, the project proposal template will be sent by the research coordinator. After you've completed, you need to uh, submit it back to the coordinator. The project will be, a proposal will be evaluated at the Research Ethics Scientific Committee, which they sit only once a month. Once the project has been approved um, or disapproved, project approval, approval or with condition will be sent by the research coordinator. And the sample requested from the biobank uh, will be dispersed, but um, bearing in mind that only a small allocate 
of the individual will be given so that we still have uh, remaining of that um, species. And the material transfer agreement is signed by the principal investigator, ensuring uh, proper use of the samples. Um, and the project report needs to be submitted to the National Zoological Gardens. This is just the form, what it looks like, the request for material transfer. By allowing access to these valuable samples, techniques, and data by the research community, both national and internationally, this accelerates the, the with the accelerated loss of biodiversity can potentially be slowed down enough to make a difference. The tissues already available through repositories worldwide can perhaps prevent the arrival of the sixth extinction. This is just a slogan that I just want to leave you with. Don't shoot mm -hmm. us with cameras, shoot us with guns. Sorry. <laughs> By the way, sorry. Shoot us with... No, I just wanted to keep you awake. <laughs> Thank you.